consider the following algebraic functions. We want to be able to graph and then from there to uh, find the, uh, the area. And so by, by graphing, we want to graph uh, here the first, second uh, functions and then the, uh, the vertical lines x equals 0, x equal to 2. So if we look at this graph, and what I want to do is take that first function, and if we set that equal to 0, we get x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. And so that implies that we have x equal to 2 and also x equal to negative 2. Now for the second function, y equal to negative x plus 5, if we set this function equal to 0, we get negative x plus 5 is equal to 0. Negative x is equal to negative 5. x is equal to 5. Well, these just gives us our x-intercepts. And that first function, uh, y equal to x squared minus 4, has a y-intercept at, at negative 4. And then it touches the x-axis at x equal to negative 2 and x equal to positive 2. So we get this graph here. And then um, and this is negative 2 and positive 2. And then for the line, y equal to negative x plus 5, just a straight line with a negative slope. And it touches at the x-axis at x equal to 5. So we have something like that. Now, here, when x is equal to 2, x equal to 0, x equal to 0 is the y-axis, and then x equal to 2 is here. So the, the shaded, well, the area that's contained, there used to be a way I could do the shaded area. shaded area. I didn't mean to cross that. Stay within these two vertical lines. And you can definitely use that graphing tool and where up a sign. I have a video there that you can watch in terms of how to uh, put your graph in and that uh, graphing tool in WebAssign is kind of funny. Um, so watch out. So let's see. Uh, X is bounded from 0 to 2. And then the function uh, Y is bounded uh, below by this curve and is bounded above uh, by this line here. So it's bounded below, just looking at that graph, is bounded below by x squared minus 4 and is bounded above by negative x plus 5. And so based on the uh, the formula that we have uh, in the section uh, in the book, we're looking for the area that's bounded uh, by that shaded uh, area there. So this is some integral. X goes from 0 to 2 of the, the upper function minus the lower function. So here that becomes the negative x plus 5 minus the lower function based on the graph x squared minus 4 dx. And so now we want to just simplify that and then integrate. Integral from 0 to 2, negative x. This is uh, plus 5, and here uh, plus 4. So that becomes a plus 9 minus x squared dx. So now we integrate. We have negative x 
to the second divided by 2 plus 9x minus x to the third all over 3. We evaluate these x values from uh, 0 to 2. So that gives us negative 2 to be squared all over 2. plus 9 times 2 minus 2 to the third over 3. So this gives us a negative 2 plus 18 minus 8 over 3. And so we get 16 minus 8 over 3. And that gives us uh, 48 minus 8, 40 over 3. And that's that. Let's look at the next one. Consider the, uh, the following algebraic functions and they want us to do the same thing. Um, if we look at the graph, so we have the line uh, y equal to x does that. The line y equal to 8 minus x. So that's going to have a x x-intercept at, at 8 and a y-intercept at 8. And so we have something uh, like this. And then the line y equal to 0 is the x-axis. Here in particularly, we're concerned about uh, the contained region. And we say it's bounded everywhere. And so we want to calculate this area. You could do it in two parts if you uh, focus on x dx. You would have to have the lower uh, graph, the upper graph, and then the vertical lines where it's bounded. Then plus here, this uh, uh, lower limit, upper limit, and then the graph below and the graph above. Or you can just do one uh, integral and uh, just be concerned with y dy, and if you do that, then we're looking at something like c less than or equal to um, y less than or equal to d, actually that's x, And then for, well, I'm sorry, that's y. y equal to, it's late. So here, the horizontal line, y equal to c, and then y equal to d. And then in terms of x, uh, where is it bounded below and above? And so uh, we write uh, the function in terms of y. So that first one is, is OK. That's already set for us. But for the next one, you get y equal to 8 minus x. If we solve for x, add x on both sides, subtract y on both sides, we get x is equal to 8 minus y. And so the uh, if we're going from, from least to the greatest, uh, the lower function here would be this line, uh, y equal to x. So this is going to be y less than or equal to x, less than or equal to this upper uh, function. And so this guy is the x equal to 8 minus y. So the x equal to y. So that was... 8 minus y. And so you have it. Um, well, uh, we've got to find out uh, these values uh, where y is bounded below and above. Well, this y equals c looks like y equals 0, but we don't know about this line here. We can find that by setting the two equations equal. So we have y equal to x and y equal to 8 minus x. So if we set those equal, we get x is equal to 8 minus x. 2x is equal to 8. 
x is equal to 4. So this is x equal to 4 here, but we have the line y equal to x, and so that also implies that y is equal to 4. So we have uh, y is bounded below by 0 and bounded above by 4. So we find this area. This is the integral from 0 to 4. It's the upper limit for x, which is 8 minus y, minus the lower limit for x, which is y. This is now dy. So this is the integral from 0 to 4. We have 8 minus 2y dy. Just integrating that, that gives us 8y minus 2y to be squared divided by 2. So that's just y squared. And we evaluate these values from uh, 0 to 4. So we get 32. Uh, minus 16, and that gives us 16. Okay, so let's uh, look at the, the next one. Set up and evaluate the integral that gives the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region about the y-axis. So, we want to revolve this about the, the y-axis. And so notice the thickness here is delta y. So that materializes into dy. And if that be the case, then that means we must solve the equation in terms of, of y. So this implies that if we solve uh, for x, uh, we get x is equal to square both sides, um, uh, and then after squaring both sides, uh, subtract 36 on both sides. Well, I guess you could square both sides, uh, add x squared on both sides, subtract uh, y squared on both sides. Am I saying that right? Oh, it is late. <laughs> after 8 p.m. to be exact. And so I didn't want to do the algebra, just want to go ahead and just write it. But at any rate, square both sides, we get y squared is equal to 36 minus x squared. And so I'm going to add x squared on both sides, subtract y squared on both sides. So this implies that we have x squared is equal to 36 minus y squared, take the square root of both sides, and so this gives us x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 36 minus y squared, and just taking the, the positive part, um, because we're above here the, uh, the x-axis, and just for this side, this sector here, so we just look at x is equal to the square root of 36 minus y squared. And you remember from algebra that uh, this is part of a circle, just the um, fourth segment, and so uh, x and y are symmetric, so you can just swap out those values and and, and everything is, is good. So uh, we're looking for the volume. So the volume based on that formula is, the, is pi times the integral. Let's see where y is going. y is bounded from here, y equal to 0 to y equal to 6. So we're going from 0 uh, to 6. If we measure this, this radius with respect to y, it's equal to the square root of that 36 minus y squared. So we take the radius squared and then dy. So this is the square root of... 36 minus y squared, all to be squared, and then dy. So we get the volume is pi times the integral from 0 to 6, 36 minus y squared, dy. Now we do not hesitate. We integrate. 
and so we get 36y minus y cubed divided by 3 evaluate uh, these terms from 0 to 6 and so we get the pi times 36 times 6 minus 6 to the third all over 3 and then you plug in at 0 and you just get 0 and so on your calculator that gives us uh, 144 pi again we find the volume here of the solids generated by revolving the regions bounded by the graphs of the equations about the given lines so basically we're talking about this graph here the square root of x and x goes from 0 to 6 so basically just talking about this part here now we keep changing the axis of revolution and so the, the graph uh, can get complicated uh, but no problem let's look at part a so here we have this graph but it's revolved revolving around the x-axis So if that be the case, then it looks like this. And so this guy is revolving there. Now, if I take that and if I look at, you know, for the, uh, the so-called uh, disk method, uh, the radius is going to be perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So the axis here, revolution is the x-axis. So the radius here has a thickness of delta x. Now we we need to to measure the length of the radius. So the radius is with respect to x, and it has a height of the square root of x. So for that first part, the volume is pi times the integ the integral, and where is the integral going from and to? Well, it's going from 0 to 6. And this is times that radius to be squared, dx. So that gives us pi times the integral from 0 to 6 of just x dx. And so for part A, the volume we get here is uh, pi times x squared over 2. Evaluate the x is from 0 to 6 and so that gives us here the x squared 6 squared times pi so we have 6 squared all over 2 times pi 36 divided by 2 we get the 18 pi now for part b it says here that you're revolving about the y-axis so it's looking like this kind of cylinder now I, I need to just graph exactly what I need remember this guy here is going to 6 if that's going to 6, that means that this height on y is y equal the square root of 6. So this is the square root of 6 here. So since we're revolving this about the, uh, the so-called uh, y-axis, I have two radius. I have this radii. It's going to be capital R. And then I have the small one. We call that little r. Now, the thickness of the, the radius is with respect to y. And so the r's depend on, on y. Now, the, the capital R has a length of 6. Don't want to get confused with part c. 
So this is equal to six. And the little r is uh, the shape of that curve with respect to y. Well, let's see, we have to uh, solve for x. So if we're given uh, y equal to the square root of x, then this becomes x is equal to y squared. So little r here is y squared. Again, this is still part uh, part B. And so for part B, the, the volume is pi times, here we're going from 0 to the square root of 6. Remember, this is now with respect to y, dy. And so this becomes the, the big radius, which is 6, that's to be squared, minus the little radius, y squared, to be squared. And then this is times dy. Again, uh, part b. So the volume is pi times the integral from 0 to the square root of 6. 36 minus y to the fourth. Now we do not hesitate. We integrate. So this is pi times I'm integrating, so this is 36y minus y to the fifth all over 5. And we're evaluating these terms from 0 to the square root of 6. So that gives us pi times 36 times the square root of 6 minus the square root of 6 to the fifth power. That's over 5. So this is pi times... Uh, brackets 36 times the square root of 6 minus this is the square root of 6 times 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 the square root of 6 and the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is 6 and then times the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is 6 so that's 36 and I had left one more square root of 6 over 5. Now um, you just simplify that and when you do that that gives us, well, that's the 36 times the 5, then minus 36, and that gives you 144. And so we get 144 pi times the square root of 6 all over 5. Now, part C, they want us to take the same shape, but uh, revolve that about the line x equal to 6. Ooh. about the line x equal to 6. So let's look at that. I have to look at the graph to see what's going on. Now the, the cylinder stops at x equal to, to 3. So we have a hole. So we have that washer method, right? And this is x equal to 6. So we have a the big radius which is 6, so R, capital R of X is equal to 6. Excuse me. I'm saying something, but I'm writing something else, but I'm going crazy. That's not what I meant. It's 6 minus the curve. 6 minus the curve. The curve, now notice this guy has a thickness of delta Y, so I have to write these values with respect to Y, and that's supposed to be R of Y. I do apologize. So this is R of Y. So this is 6 minus. And we found, we found that guy to be Y squared. And then little r right here. And just, just let me write it over here. Little r with respect to Y is the, just the difference between 6 and 3. So that's just 3. So we calculate this volume. This is pi times the integral. Again, it's going from 0 to the square root of 6. So it's capital R, which is that 6 minus y squared, and that's to be squared, minus little r, which is 3 to be squared. And then we integrate. 
So this is pi times the integral from 0 to the square root of 6. Simplify. So we get 36 minus 12y squared plus y to the 4th minus 9 dy. So we're still simplifying. So this is pi times the integral from 0 to the square root of 6. Here that gives us 27, 36 minus 9 minus 12y squared plus y to the 4th dy. Now we integrate. We do not, we do not discriminate. We integrate. <laughs> okay, so this is 27y minus 12y to the 3rd divided by 3, so that's 4. y to the 3rd plus y to the 5th divided by 5. And that's evaluated from 0 to the square root of 6. And so this is pi times 27 times the square root of 6 minus 4 times the square root of 6 to the 3rd, which is the square root of 6 times the square root of 6. Uh, which is just 6, and then times the square root of 6, plus the square root of 6 to the fifth, again, the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is 6, and then a square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is 6, so that's 36, and I have left the square root of 6 over 5. So, let's see, this, as we continue to work that out. Let's see what we get. So this is pi times. That becomes here Make sure I didn't put in there what I, this is part C, that's, this is 6 mi minus y squared, I have that, okay, let's see, something doesn't look, something doesn't look good, let's see. This is the line x equal to 6. So this is, again, 6 minus y squared. Make sure my math is good. 36 minus 12y squared plus y to the fourth. And then that little part is 6 minus 3. So I get 3 to be squared. That's minus 9. And so... Let me go back. Yeah, this is x equal to six. So I'm already at x equal to six. There's there's no gap. There's no three there. Now, why did I do that? I don't know. It says here the line x equal to six, but this is x equal to six. Oh, boy, it's a lot of work. Well, that makes it easier. I was actually doing something like for number D. I don't know why I got X equal to 6 from. I got to change all that. Jeez, mercy. Maybe because I was writing in blue. This guy's going to six already. Did I note that in the other ones? Yeah, okay. 
So good. So we're going to revolve this right here. So that means that the radius is 6 minus the curve. And the thickness is delta y. And so this is r. So here, r of y. It's only one radius here now. So this guy is the 6 minus y squared. Since it's with respect to y, we, we saw y that was equal to the square root of x. That becomes x equal to y squared. And so this volume, we better use black, is equal to pi times the integral from 0. Remember, this is the square root of 6 for y. And this is that radius, 6 minus y squared to be squared dy. Man, I can't believe I messed that up. This is the integral pi times um, this integral here from 0 to square root of 6. This is 36 minus 12y squared plus y to the fourth. We did part of that. So I guess that was good. So we know what's coming. So we integrate. This is pi times 36 times y. Minus 12y to the third divided by 3 is 4y to the third plus y to the fifth over 5. That's evaluated from 0 to the square root of 6. So we get pi 36 times the square root of 6 minus 4 times 6, 24 times the square root of 6. Plus, and this was 36 times the square root of 6 all over 5. So that gives us pi 12 times the square root of 6 plus 36 over 5 times the square root of 6. So this, this becomes uh, the 12 times 5, which is 60, plus 36 gives us 96 over 5 times pi times the square root of 6. And is that the answer? Yes. Now part D, I'm going to have to put on the next page, this is to revolve this about the, the line x equal to 9. So we have this shape that goes to 6, not 3. I don't know where I got that from. And then you want to revolve it about the line x equal to 9. So, so we have two radii. This guy here with that washer method, it's a dy delta y. And then we have the small one. So this one is big R and this one is little r. So the big R of Y is equal to this line 9 minus the curve, 9 minus the curve, Y squared. And then the little r of Y is equal to the 9 minus the 6. We get 3. Again, that's still going from 0 to the square root of 6. So this volume is equal to pi times the integral from 0 to the square root of 6 of capital R of y to be squared minus little uh, r of y. So this is 9 minus y squared to be squared minus that little guy to be squared. And we're integrating. So we simplify that. This is pi times the integral from 0 to the square root of 6. Here we get 81 <laughs> minus 18y squared plus y to the fourth minus 9 dy. Simplify one more time the integral of pi in the front from 0 to the square root of 6. 
81 minus 9 is 72 minus 18 y squared plus y to the 4. Have mercy. So uh, we integrate. So put the pi there in front. 72 y minus 18 y to the third divided by 3. We get 6 y to the third plus y to the fifth all over 5. Let's evaluate it from 0 to the square root of 6. <clears throat> Alrighty, so this gives us pi times parentheses brackets 72 times the square root of 6 minus, this is 6 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 6, which becomes 6 times 6, 36 times the square root of 6, plus the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is 6, another square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is 6, so that's 36 times the square root of 6, and that's over 5. And so we have pi times 72 minus 36 is 36 times the square root of 6 plus 36 times the square root of 6 over 5. It gives us 36 times 5 plus 36. So 36 times 5 plus 36 is 216. pi times the square root of 6 all over 5. Is that the answer? 216 times the square root of 6 pi all over 5. Good. Use the shell method this time using that formula for the uh, for the shell method, if we have a thickness of delta x, then we have a multiplying factor of x, um, and that uh, x is said to measure the, the distance from the axis to the midsection of uh, the radius, and so this is equal to x. If it was delta uh, y, then that distance would be y. So, so this volume by the shell method, I think that's 2 pi for that one. Since it's delta x, we're measuring from uh, x goes from 0 to, I think that's 9, x goes to 9. And so this becomes that multiplying factor x and then times the, uh, the height of the, the radius. So this height is the square root of x. So it's times that dx. So this is 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 9. x times the square root of x is x to the 3 half dx. So this gives us 2 pi. We integrate. This is x to the 5 halves all over 5 halves. And this x is evaluated from, well, the term here is evaluated from 0 to 9. So this becomes 4 pi all over 5. Here's that 9 to the um, to the um, 5 halves power. So this is 3 to the second, that 9 raised to the 5 half uh, power. And so we get this volume is 4 pi. over 5. This becomes 3 to the 5th. And so my calculator, so that becomes 3 to the 5th times the 4, so that's 972 divided by 5. 972 divided by 5 times pi. Find the arc length. This arc length is going to be measured. X goes from 0 to 2. It 
So this arc length is said to be the integral from 0 to 2. It's going to be the, the square root of the function. We take its derivative. So y prime is equal to 2 thirds times 3 halves times x to the 3 half minus 1. That's x to the 3 half minus 2 over 2. So this is just x to the 1 half power. So y prime is equal to the square root of x or x to the 1 half. So this is x to the 1 half to be squared. Then that's plus 1 based on the formula dx on the outside. So simplify that. This arc length is the integral from 0 to 2 of the square root of x plus 1 dx. Here we let u equal to x plus 1. And so that implies that du is equal to dx. So we have the arc length is the integral from 0 to 2 of u to the 1 half du. So we integrate that. We get here u to the 1 half plus 1. So that's 3 halves divided by 3 halves evaluated from 0 to 2. But that's the x plus 1 term evaluated in that regard. So we have the arc length. This is 2 over 3 times x plus 1 the 3 half power evaluated from 0 to 2. So the arc length is the 2 thirds. Let's do the evaluation. Plug in x to equal to 2. So we get 3 to the 3 halves. Then that's minus. Plug in x equal to 0. We get 1 to the 3 halves. So we get 2 over 3 times. Here, this is 3 to the third, that's 27, is the square root of that, minus 1. And you can leave it like that. Where's my calculator? You plug that on your calculator, you get something around 2.797. Okay. Is that what they have? Yep, good. Use Hooke's Law to determine the variable force in the spring problem. So Hooke's Law says that the force can be calculated by the, the distance, if you're talking about a spring, uh, the stretch or the compression of it, uh, some distance of x or some distance of s, uh, whatever suits your fancy, times some constant of proportionality. I'm just going to use that. So here they give us a force of 7 pounds and this distance uh, of this compression is 5 inches. So we have, based on Hooke's Law, 7 is equal to 5 times k. So this implies that k is equal to 7 fifths. So the force formula is 7 fifths times k. Excuse me, 7 fifths times x. Oh, it's a long day. The force formula is 7 fifths. 7 fifths is k times x. All right, that's better. So now the work is equal to the force times the displacement, uh, the, the movement of the, of the object. And so this force here, and we use the integral to calculate this change in x. It's how much work is done in compressing the spring 8 inches. So we're going to go from 0 to 8. The force is this 7 over 5 times x times the delta x, which matriculates into dx. So now you just integrate. So we get the work 7 over 5 times x squared over 2, evaluate that from 0 to 8. So we get 7 over 10 here, 8 to be squared. And this is in inches, uh, pounds, inch pounds. And so 
work that out. That's 64 times the 7. So that's 440 over 10 inch pounds or simplify that 224 over 5. That doesn't make I think it's 448. Let's see here, 64 times 7. Yeah, I can't see my calculator. So the digits are so small. Hmm. Too much to erase. That's 448 over 10, so we get 224 inch pounds. 224 over five inch pounds. Okay, yep, that's good. Let's look at the next one. A rectangular tank with a base four feet by five and a height of four feet is full of water. Yeah, we see that in the figure. Thank you. The water weighs, the water density, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. How much work is done in pumping water out uh, over the, the top edge in order to empty the following amount? So since the water is, is over the top edge, then if you look at what they say here, half of the tank, and if the height is four uh, feet, then we have to measure from the midsection up. And so uh, we want to take that into consideration. Again, we're calculating the work, which is the force times the displacement for part A. We calculate the work here. So we have that weight density, 62.4 times the integral. We're going from two to four. It's the top half. Now, to calculate this, since this is this, this cubic volume, it becomes the, the base times the change in the height. So the base is five times four, so we get 20. The change in the height this is it's changing because the water is, is flowing out or in, whatever. And so uh, that uh, the total height is 4, so this is 4 minus y. And so you get a volume, if you will, uh, 5 times 4, and that's the base uh, area times the change in the height, dy. And you calculate that, you get what you want. So the work is, we can take, this is 62.4 times 20. Integrate that 4 minus y. I'm going to go ahead and just do that. This is 4y minus y squared over 2. I'm going to evaluate this from 2 to 4. So we get the work is equal to 62.4 times 20. And then this becomes Evaluate uh, y at 4, we get 16 minus 16 divided by 2 is 8. And then minus, uh, evaluate at 2, we get 8. And then this is minus the minus, that's plus. And that gives us 4 divided by 2. And that gives us a 2 there. And so we end up with. 62.4 times 20 times 2. Let's see if that gives us uh, what we need. So that becomes 62.4 times 40. We get 2496. 2496, and this is foot pounds.
Can you see that? Two, four, nine, six foot pounds. Now, part B here, all of the tank. So, this work we have the weight density times the integral here from zero to four, and we get 20, and then times the change in the height, four minus y dy. So if you think about it, that's only uh, taking this part A and just calculating it and letting that bottom term equal to zero. And so you can go ahead and get that. That gives you the 62.4 times 20 and then times the 16 minus 8, which is just 8. So 62.4 times 20 times 8, 8. And when you calculate that, you get the 99.84.84 foot pounds. Find the buoyancy. The buoyancy force is uh, here. We we take the um, the the force, fluid uh, force, from the the height minus the the um, the fluid uh, force from the base. So the top force is equal to we have that weight density sixty two point four times the volume, which is six times eight times the height four. 6 times 8 times the height. And then the bottom force is the 62.4, the weight density, times the base area, 6 times 8. Here, the bottom has a height of 0. So, so here, this buoyancy force becomes the top force minus the bottom force. And so that gives us the 62.4 times the 24 times 8 minus 0. And that's going to be in pounds. And so you calculate that, we get 11. 980.8 pounds. Okay, one more. Find the fluid force of a vertical plate submerged in water where the dimensions are given in meters and the weight density is 9,800 uh, newtons per cubic meter. And so you know, we have uh, this area, and the area is with respect to the the change as this object is being submerged. It's being submerged in a total distance of nine, six plus three, right? So, but for that total distance, it's gradually being submerged then. So this height looks like 9 minus y. But we're only measuring the pressure uh, on the slab. So that's going to be the integral from 0 to 6. So here, this force is equal to the weight density times the integral from 0 to 6 here times this so-called area, which is 3 times this width times the so-called height, 9 minus y 
dy. So this is that 3 times the 9800 and we integrate we get 9y minus y squared over 2 and that uh, is evaluated from 0 to 6 and so we get 3 times 9800 9 times 6 minus 36 over 2 and let's calculate that uh, on the calculator so so that's 54 minus 18 36 divided by 2 and that gives us 36 times 3 times 9800 98 times 3 times 18 did I say that right times 36 sorry 9800 times the 3 times that was the 54 9 times 6 minus 18 so that's 36 and that gives us it's like one zero five eight four hundred and that's in newtons well it looks like that's a wrap